Hey guys, it's Cam and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing an unboxing and review of an extra Christmas gift that I wasn't expecting to get, which is the Sony A6500 camera. So while I mostly do a lot of beauty things on my channel, I do want to do just some behind the scenes tech stuff because personally for me, especially with starting up my YouTube channel, that's been extremely helpful is watching videos on that topic. And I feel like some people don't really reveal their behind the scenes secrets of just what makes their video qualities the way that they are and different things that they get to upgrade their video quality and so I wanted to you know I have nothing to hide I expose all my secrets so I wasn't very happy with the video quality coming from my phone which I started with the Samsung Galaxy S7 moved on to the Galaxy Note 9 recently when I switched carriers and got to upgrade but even though that camera had like a better aperture and stuff like that it still isn't as crisp as people who use actual DSLRs to film their videos. A lot of people, like when you're first starting off on YouTube and Googling how to start your channel and stuff, do say, oh, start filming on your phone if that's all you have. And I really don't see many people doing that, even though that's how I started. I really quickly was like, this is not the video quality that's up to par with other people's videos. And it just makes it kind of look flat. And it's like, you'll see like the difference between the phone and the actual DSLR camera is almost like going from 2D to 3D. And so when I was playing around with cameras like in Best Buy and stuff, I was just amazed at how much better it was than the actual phone camera, which, you know, while people say isn't terrible, it's like, it's not terrible, but it's by no means like really good. <laughs> so... So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, especially because I will be doing a lot of these behind the scenes exposés, especially as I learn just how to make my YouTube channel better and better. So if you're interested in that, I am going to have more things coming your way once I do certain upgrades to my channel. And if you find these types of videos helpful, then please hit that like button down below and I'll be sure to really make a concentrated effort to show you more of kind of the behind the scenes stuff that goes into having a channel. So let's get into opening this bad boy. So disclaimer, I've already kind of taken everything out of the plastic just so I don't have to fiddle around with that on camera and cut everything and you know, put it in the recycling. So everything's kind of already unpackaged and sorted the way that it came for me to show you. So there's a lot of paperwork in here that you can peruse at your own time, but I'm just going to jump straight into the good stuff. So you've kind of got three compartments here with the camera, the kit lens that comes with it, and just other accessories like straps and batteries. So starting off with some of the accessories, you do get a charger and cable, the little battery, the viewfinder cushion, and you actually also do get a camera strap, which is really cool because we were looking at what accessories to get with this, and we definitely wanted a strap, and we didn't know that it's included in this, so that's really nice that they threw that in there. But also, I do recommend when you actually want to store and take your camera around with you that you do get a little carrying case. So I did actually order like the little Sony branded carrying case online. It's like 20 bucks and it hasn't come yet, but that's what I'm planning on just storing it at my house and for when I'm taking it on the go with me. All right, so now taking this lens out, this is the kit lens that comes with this and I've seen a lot of recommendations of getting what are called prime lenses, which are at a fixed distance, but I really wanted something with zoom, especially, you know, so I can zoom in on eye looks or something like that. And so this is really nice because this lens is 18 to 135 millimeters, so I can get wide angle and I can zoom in really close as well. So it's great for vlogging and it's great for if you like just want to zoom in on your eye. And I really wanted that versatility. Now the trade-off is that because this is a kit lens, the aperture isn't the best. It's 3.5 to 5.6, where you know a lot of the lenses that people recommend are about like a 1.8, sometimes even a 1.4 aperture, but this isn't too bad. The only downside is that, as you'll see when I switch over to filming with this, that the overall image is a little bit darker, and that's because the higher the aperture, kind of like the less light it can bring in, so you really need a 
amp up your lighting if you're going to use something with a higher aperture like that. And that's why a lot of people go with like the 1.8s because they just perform better in low light. And so just comparing that really quickly to my phone, which again is the Note 9, the aperture on that camera is actually like a 2.4 and a 1.5, which does let in a lot more light. And I am filming only using a ring light, which so far has been sufficient. So that's good that it does let in a lot of light even in low light conditions, but it's still not, you know, the best camera because if you look at the sensor of a phone camera, it's so small, it's not gonna pick up the detail that you're gonna see once we switch over to the DSLR. And so with this lens, you also get a hood, which is really good, because I was also looking at picking one up separately, wasn't aware that this was included, and so this hood is really nice because it just kind of shields glare if you're filming outside and just helps protect your lens. And speaking of protecting your lens, you always want to have this lens cap on your lens so it doesn't get dusty, so it doesn't get scratched, so when you're storing it, when you're not using it, always keep the cap on. And so I don't really know what lenses I would get in the future, but I'm really happy with this kit lens because everything that was kind of out there that's comparable that's in the same zoom range really wasn't a much lower aperture and they were also really, really expensive. And so the body of the Sony a6500 only generally goes for about 1100 and both of these together were 1500 so you kind of get $100 off by buying them with the kit lens. And that puts this lens at about 400 which everything else that's out there was generally about double that. So this lens is a really good deal. And so this is the body. It's great because it's really lightweight. It's really small. But one of the big downsides about this camera though is that it does not have a fully articulating screen. So it only goes out to about this much and it doesn't flip up or out to the side like some of the Canons may do. That's okay because I generally have my husband filming me so I don't need a kind of be aware of where I am in frame. If that's an issue for you, then you may wanna get one of those like HD viewfinders that do mount to the top of it. And so another solution that you can do is simply mount your phone on top of this, connect them via Wi-Fi, and then you will have a live feed that you can use as a viewfinder. The only downside to that is that because it's via Wi-Fi, there may be a little bit of lag. But if you just wanna make sure you're in frame, then it could work for that. And so really quickly, before I mount my camera, I just wanna show you because you do need this in order to operate the camera, and that is a micro SD card, and it's in the adapter right now, but this is the micro SD card, this is the adapter it comes with, and you do need this to put inside the camera so that you're able to save your footage, essentially. And so this one's the Samsung Evo brand. And so this is an SDXC U3. And so the SDXC just kind of offers you faster data transfer speeds. And basically this is fast enough to be able to handle 4K recording, which is one of the benefits about this camera is that it does record in 4K. And so U3 is also the minimum read write speed that you need to be able to save 4K data. For some reason there's two classifications but you do need the SDXC and the U3 in order to be able to read right in the 4K quality. So if you do have a camera that is 4K capable, then you will need this. And I actually got this one on Black Friday, so it was a really good price. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. So yeah, it was a good deal considering how good of an SD card it is. Now I'm gonna pop this puppy on my tripod and talk a little more about it, and that way you can kind of fully absorb the difference in quality. So we have it up on the tripod and I did want to mention that I have the standard tripod that the ring light is mounted on that came with it. So I don't know what kind of setup you're working with at home, whether you have a ring light or not, but while it's stable enough to just put a ring light on and has been fine for my actual phone, because the camera's heavier, right now it's being a little shaky and unstable. So I kind of anticipated that, so I did order another tripod that is actually like a proper camera tripod that has like a little swivel for it and a quick release mount and everything. So I recommend getting one of those if you have kind of like the cheaper build of a ring light tripod. So I just wanna zoom in so that you guys can see kind of the higher detail of like my eye makeup looks and everything. And as you can see, I am wearing a Stila Glitter and Glow eyeshadow today where if I did this with my phone, first of all, it would lose resolution, but also second of all, the glitter really did just always show up as like a metallic sheen rather than glittery. So it never picked up glitter. 
and I've been using glitter in almost every single video recently so that was really disappointing that I put all this like hard work into a good glitter application and it just kind of looked flat so hopefully this really does pick up how gorgeous these eyeshadows are and so as you can see this is picking up a lot more detail and I guess this is why people use filters because as you're zooming in like you can just see like all the pores all the like you know foundation that's separating since I applied it hours ago and yeah it just picks up everything in much higher detail and that could be a good or a bad thing depending on how you feel about that and so I wanted to talk a little bit about why I chose this camera specifically which again is the Sony a6500 as opposed to going down to like a 6300 or a 6000 or even going with a Canon camera and so one of the big features that I really wanted was the fact that this has in-body stabilization and basically what that means is that the camera itself kind of has almost like a mini built-in gimbal where it'll just stabilize the image better than let's say some other cameras will have which this has as well an optically stabilized lens which does help a little bit but if you see like a side-by-side -side comparison of someone holding the camera and walking the in-body stabilization like basically also the sensor is stabilized so that coupled with the lens like really makes a big difference and so this is great for vlogging which I will hopefully be able to do in the future when I am not working 24 7 <laughs> and so that's really why I wanted to get this one because of that in-body image stabilization which really is only found in this plus like the Sony a7 II and up and is not in like the 6300 or the 6000 and so I wanted to get something that was feature proof because if I had bought a Canon, let's say, then I would have to use a gimbal, which those are pretty big and bulky, not to mention pricey, so that's adding extra money on top of already the investment of the camera. And if I didn't do that, then I would just have to upgrade a camera later when they do come out with more models that have the in-body stabilization. So I just wanted to get that right off the bat. And so speaking of future-proofing, this camera, again, also records in 4K, which is a nice option to have. That's something that in the Canon range, you would have to go to like one of their top tier cameras to even begin to have as an option. Another great feature is that this can record in 120 frames per second, whereas most other cameras will only do 60 frames per second, allowing you to do like really nice dragged out slow-mos. So if you wanna do that for your intro or just as an accent in your editing, then this will be really helpful for that. And so the general consensus is that Sony is generally regarded as better for video, where Canon is kind of better for like photos, skin tones maybe, but you know, a lot of people do complain about the Sony skin tones, which is just something that you kind of have to pay attention to when you do your color grading, which I'm definitely about to learn a lot more about. <laughs> and so also on the topic of color grading, this camera can record in S-Log and stuff like that, which is very similar to like RAWs for photos and basically just looks like an image void of any color but there's so much information in it that you like can just go wild in color editing and really bring out a lot of tones but that's really complicated color grading which I haven't learned yet and just essentially yeah recording in raw and then adding that color back in is a little more of a intensive process that not many people want to go through doing but you do have that option in this camera if you're somebody that does actually like recording or you know taking photos in raw and then editing them after and so you can essentially do that with your videos on this camera and so that's another big reason why i opted for this camera is because i felt like the colors were more true to life it did have like more of the image information in the shadows and everything so I felt like it just had a more dynamic range than you know I in the store I recorded on this and I recorded on various Canon cameras and I did feel like this was just a more true-to-life image and it had like more detail in the image as well and there was also a lot more information in the shadows which is the big downside of like the phone camera which doesn't pick up any information in the shadows so that's why that one kind of sucks <laughs> And so, you know, you can definitely see that difference because if you compare it to earlier in this video where I'm recording on the phone camera, you can't really see how blue my eyes are. You kind of just saw this like weird shadow under my chin here where here you can just kind of 
take in all the detail, if you know what I mean. The Associates at Best Buy, where I kind of was able to do all the comparisons on the different cameras, did let me like, you know, use their Mac and blow up the videos on both the Canon and the Sony side by side. And that's really where I was able to see and like just the entire staff in the store were in agreement that the Sony was the way to go as far as the detail and the image quality and just like the way it was picking up skin tones and stuff like that. Honestly, I'm not sponsored by Sony. I know it may like sound like this, but I really did just want to get whatever I felt was best. And I was comparing this with the 80D when I did like shoot because that's kind of like the display model that they had that was most accessible there. And yeah, I just didn't feel like the 80D image quality stacked up to this one. And I know everyone uses it, it's really popular, but you know, there are some pluses to Canon cameras, which is that the lenses are a little cheaper and it's just an overall cheaper entry point, but I really do feel like you get what you pay for with the Sony cameras. But it's okay, you can sponsor me if you want to, Sony. I would love to review more of your stuff. And so, Again, like I kind of can't stop singing its praises, but I really just want to tell you all the amazing things about this camera. So it has 425 focus points. So the autofocus is amazing on this, whereas most other cameras will have like 50 focus points. <laughs> so yeah, this is a beast when it comes to that. It also has really good high ISO, which is essentially like low light performance because if you're in low light, you need to turn up the ISO. So it kind of can open up the lens a little bit more and let more light in. So if you're vlogging and let's say you're like in a dimly lit restaurant that's like romantic, but you know, so not good for lighting or something like that, then this will perform better than like any other camera in that kind of scenario. So especially for vlogging where you don't have really control over lighting, this is amazing. And so yeah, you take that, you take its small size, you take its in-body sensor stabilization, and that just makes this like the perfect vlogging camera too. So while it's good in a setup like this from in a very controlled studio environment, it's also just amazing for vlogging. And then I just wanted to touch on like some other things that I was looking for in case, you know, you're not aware of what the difference is between this and other cameras, for example, is that this one does have touch screen so that you're able to like touch on the screen right where you want it to focus. And it also does have a microphone port, which I was looking at like the A6000 or 5100 because obviously those are so much cheaper. They don't have microphone jacks. So the 5100 I'm pretty sure doesn't have one at all. And so the A6000 actually only had like a little adapter thing that lets you use it with like one specific Sony microphone, which obviously isn't gonna give you the quality of like a Rode mic or something like that. One thing that I will say is that if you compare this to the phone camera footage, which we shot earlier, and I did touch upon this a little bit, is that I still have my ring light at about the same brightness, but we did have to turn up ISO compensation a little bit to get a brighter image. And that's where like you have people with like the ring light and then two soft boxes and then maybe lights like on the background because I feel like everything around me is looking a little dark and I did have to increase that exposure compensation to brighten myself up. So I may be looking into lighting in the very near future, but it still works. It's just you might notice that in comparison to the phone camera because the phone camera does have that lower aperture and this one is a 3.5 to 5.6, which right now we're on the 3.5. Also another thing that people have complained about this particular camera that I've read is the battery life isn't, because it's a smaller camera, it's a smaller battery, it's not gonna last as long as like one of the Canons, but that's a trade-off for having like what I would say is the perfect vlogging camera. So definitely get some backup batteries. And I think I've waxed poetic about this enough, but I just wanted to kind of you know, inform you about why I made the decision that I did. And I would love to hear just what camera you're using, what made you pick it, because obviously, you know, people have different preferences. So, yeah. And so some of you might have seen that a lot of people do use the Sony 5100, which the big, like, appeal of that one, well, I would say, like, the only appeal of that one, besides for, like, the screen flips up, is that it does have a built-in skin smoothing filter, and this does not. So with this, you can, like, kind of travel inside my pores, and... Oh my god, I, like, knocked it. Okay, so with this one, you can just kind of, like, really see inside my pores and everything, where with the 5100, it really does give you that, like, airbrushed finish right out of the camera, which a lot of people want for their vlogs, but 
I don't even know why they sell that one. It's so old, seriously, and it was so cheap. So, you know, it doesn't have just all of the features of this that I've just touted. And yeah, I mean, this to me was like a no brainer decision, just besides for obviously the fact that it was very expensive. <laughs> This actually does have the skin smoothing filter, but just for pictures and not for video. So I don't know if that's a feature that people are looking for, but yeah, I do know that that's what it comes with. And so I love this camera. I can't wait to play around with it more and discover just like even more that I can do with it. But I really do hope that this helps improve the quality of my channel and just, yeah, I was... I was so upset when I saw the way that my phone camera picked up glitter. I was like, this is like tragic. Like, why am I even applying the glitter when you can't see it? So I'm just really happy about this. And I hope that just the higher quality is something that you enjoy too. So yeah, I'm just really happy about the fact that it will pick up more detail. And so if you love this camera as much as I do, or you're like, yeah, I gotta have this, I'm gonna link it down below for you in the description. And I'm also going to link some of the accessories, like the Techstar microphone that I'm using with it. But I got to be honest, I did go out and order a Rode VideoMic Pro because I feel like the Techstar, while it's great for being what it is, which is really cheap, like 25 bucks for a shotgun mic, it still picks up a little bit of echo, which the Rode mic is just supposed to cancel out. So I am going to try to upgrade to that. and hopefully get better audio quality as well. So if you want to check out that mic either for like an entry level one or for the video mic pro then I'm going to link both of those down below for you as well. And like the little tripod that I got from Amazon which also was really cheap like 20 bucks and same thing with the case because I think it just like fits the camera really well and then does give you that extra bit of space on top for if you want to pack in like that Rode Video Mic Pro with it. So it's great for on the go. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed me like just rambling about how awesome this camera is. But like I said, I can't wait to play around with it. I'm stoked for this. So I will see you all in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that like button down below if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments for me and I'll be sure to answer. And let me know what you guys think if this is like actually as good of an improvement as I think it is over my phone camera camera or if I wasted my money. I don't know. If you're still here, here's two more videos about me you can check out. And of course, clicking on my face will subscribe you to my channel so you don't miss out on all my goodies coming up. That's it. I love you all. Mwah. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.